we gather here in this particular time and place to make a circle. To make a circle with our voices and our attention and intention. Knowing as we do that our people have gathered around fire and trees and water for thousands of years, plotting freedom, living out freedom. We're drumming a circle together, drumming a circle through and across time. We're singing a very, very long song, so we must remember to breathe. To check into our bodies and what they carry. This circle, consecrated for freedom dreams and those who practice them across time and space, meeting in this sonic landscape. To this circle, we welcome the particular nows we straddle. We welcome our ancestors' deep well of love and care, as well as their nameable benevolences that nourish each of us. May this circle be a portal and a ceremony, urging us deeper into freedom's belly, urging us deeper into each other's keeping, urging us deeper into principled community. Welcome, loved one. Welcome, freedom dreamers across time and space. May your breath and your body soften as we gather here, as we circle around each other's voices and pasts and futures and the sharp, terrible present. May our memories and joys and griefs find a place of shelter in this circle. We have been gathering for so, so long, singing a long song. Our song is a dodge sometimes, a howl scream cutting through space-time. A sorrow song for those who've been murdered, trampled underneath years of suffering. Sometimes our song is a basket of annulations, marking with joy what we have been able to build and nurture, despite, despite, despite. Sometimes it's a trembling why song. Sometimes the song is only a whisper. We sing this song taking comfort in seeing our comrade ancestors singing it too. Our hands do the singing sometimes, passing food to one another, redistributing resources. Our bodies do the singing as we gather and share resources to keep each other alive despite, despite, despite. Our spirits do the singing. We work knowing that any freedom we view today will stink through eternity. Any freedom we ferment together will quench both our ancestors and our descendants just as their freedom views nourish us. In the face of the state, in the face of increasing privatization, in the face of evictions and food hikes and fuel hikes, in the face of sleek policy speak used to cloak mass violations of people's well-being, in the face of ecological destruction, in the face of the ongoing colony, in the face of many freedom dreams betrayed or co-opted, our ancestors' wisdom pins us alive. Yani, mtu ni mtu juya watu. Yani, ubuntu. Yani, ujama. Yani, community. To this circle, we call in the spirit of the Maragua Women Farmers Collective. Peasant women who were forced to grow coffee through the collusion of the state, the IMF, and their husbands. Coffee that stripped the land of its nutrients because of the expensive and intensive agrochemicals used to tame the land into producing cash crops. Hear that? Cash crops. Food abstracted to money. The actual workers of this coffee, this cash crop, were Vunja Jasho could not share in its profits. The state and their husbands and the benevolent IGOs were robbing them. Imagine that. You're forced to grow crops so that white people can have hot coffee while your own children starve. These women uprooted the coffee trees and burnt them, planting bananas and beans instead, food they could feed their own families with, or choose to barter or trade the surplus, money in their own community's hands, privileging an arrangement that made sense to them, rather than one that made sense to a bunch of consultants in Washington. Community is all we have. To this have. circle, we call in the spirit of the Ekenana occupation and the larger Abalali Basim Jondolo movement of South Africa. Community. Communities of shack dwellers, slum dwellers, people made homeless or pushed into unacceptable housing conditions by the greed and hoarding of land by private and state interests. We honor this living freedom project made up of the hopes and everyday actions of poor people. 
The Abalali movement joins our drum circle and tells us of their community gardens filled with food that's distributed to community members. They tell us of their community theater where the young and old sing and write together. They tell us about their France Fanon School of Political Education, where regular people gather to learn and question together, sharpening each other's understandings of the world. We witness the potency of their practice through their halting of slum evictions, through communes with self-organized water and electricity systems, and through their decision-making process that is in the true spirit of democracy, yani what wanajichagulia. Yani, those who are affected by the decisions make the choices. Our comrades remind us that land is not a commodity to be hoarded by African elites or their foreign counterparts. Their drums remind us what our ancestors knew. Land doesn't exist so that we build fences and evict our kin, naming them squatters, landless when we wall up their inheritance. We hold this lesson close as we grapple with cities that have no space for the poor, for the young, for the disabled, but endless space for prestige projects that serve only the elite and the state's desire kufuata nyayoza wa koloni. Whole futures squandered on your colonial fantasies. They teach us that land reform is not a future dream to entrust to the bureaucracies and delays of court proceedings or state capture. It's a now thing. As we drum, we are reminded that the kind of change we want cannot be outsourced to the state or former colonizers. If we want to learn how to time travel from the terrible colonial now that shapes so much of our countries, we must act on the people's time. Right now. Not tomorrow, not when the next report comes out, not next year, not the next election cycle. Now. As we grapple with election cycles that only seem to nourish toxic political parties, as we grapple with election cycles that only seem to change the faces of tyranny, Abalali join our drum circle and drum some sense into us. They remind us of their 2004 rallying cry. No land, no house, no vote. They rouse us from the illusions cast by these neo-colonial states that love their colonial masters more than they do their people. They teach us that unless the people's concerns are taken seriously, we do not have to legitimize the first that state electoral politics can be. They teach us that people can direct their political energies to direct action, community care, and political education. Their drums teach us that people can and should direct their political energies to the political processes that make the most sense to them. This Living Freedom Project shows us that a people's politics must be conducted where poor people live or in places that they can easily access, at the times when they are free and in the languages that they speak. The revolution cannot be professionalized. It's a lifetime of principled action centering common people's desires and realities. Not, not the states, states and, and certainly, certainly not, not the, the World, World Bank, Bank IMF. or IMF or whatever acronym stands for imperial power these days. Abalali challenges to build meaningful solidarity links with each other when they chant, uh, don't, don't talk, talk about, about us, us, talk to us. us. <laughs> even as the colonial project breathes, <laughs> even as the state attacks, assassinates and imprisons their community members, their freedom project still lives. By their survival, they affirm the power of direct action by self-organized communities. We call in the ungovernable spirit and we let it change us. Community is all we have. Is all we have. To this circle we call in the spirit of the Chipko movement of India. Peasant women living in the forests of the Himalayas. When the state of India auctioned 2,500 indigenous trees to loggers, these women knowing that their community's well-being and that of the trees was knotted together, used their very bodies to impede the loggers. Hugging the trees, clinging to them, refusing to let go, they protected their community. Here, we say community knowing that it includes non-human kin. The trees, the mushrooms, the insects, the cows, the very earth is part of our community. community. Tree huggers, wielded sometimes as an insult. Tree huggers, we honor them here, knowing that they are powerful political actors. We honor these rural women's brilliance. We honor their teaching that what we do to the earth, we do to ourselves. We are knitted together, regardless. We're singing a long song. We return and pick up what our ancestors always knew. When we live in harmonious dance with the earth, we gain powerful allies. To this circle, we call in the spirit of Walter Rodney's groundings with his brothers. 
how he went to meet with brothers and sisters and freedom dreamers and rastas in the galleys, classrooms, sharks and in people's homes, learning and teaching. We call in this revolutionary spirit so that we may learn to practice loving each other more than we fear the state. We call in the freedom fighters and dreamers of decades past, those murdered, exiled, betrayed, possibly forgotten and slandered. We call in the spirit of Amilcar Cabral, who reminds us that while we may witness and support each other in our various struggles, liberation is not an exportable commodity. Each community must deal with its own historical realities, its own context, and brew its own medicine. We struggle daily with the contradictions of our lives and let these struggles soak in love and compassion for one another. We call in the spirit of Wakadinali, of artists and culture workers who make work that reflects these deadly times. We call in the spirit of Ukoflani Maumau. We call in Makeba. We call in Nina. We call in all those multitudes who remind us that you have to roll up with your homies. Roll up na rende. Yani rende na organize pamoja. Rende ni kutegemeana na kujengana. Yani, the charm for the path is community. We call in our mothers and foremothers' wisdom. They who have been in chamas all their lives, meeting their community's needs in the face of patriarchal violence and state neglect. We call in their spirit that they may remind us how to gather and care for each other. Community. We call in the spirit of the Bukinabe Freedom Movement, of Thomas Sankara. They circle around us and remind us that development means clean drinking water for everyone, not champagne for the few. We call in the spirit of Pan-African solidarity, of working people solidarity, of international solidarity. We call in the spirit of Asata Shakur to this circle. Asata who reminds us loudly that we must love each other and protect each other, that it is our duty to fight for our freedom, that it is our duty to win. As we gather, we honor the survival of all those who were not meant to survive. We honor the Palestinian movement. We honor indigenous people across time and space. We honor all those whose names we do not know. We honor people's grassroots collectives that mushroom time and time again. We call in the spirit of the Kamirithu Theater Group. We call in the farmers, the researchers, the workers, the unemployed, the artists, the analysts, the Juakali artisans, market traders, bus drivers and conductors, freedom lovers across time and space who have weaved ways of speaking together and acting together. Gathered here in this circle, so much is clear. It is clear that the sun will set on every empire and every tyranny. It is clear that we cannot allow colonial relics, be they philanthropists, benevolent dictators or experts from above, to adjudicate the well-being of our communities. It is clear that our well-being will be assured by a commitment to dealing with each other and with the people we work with, love with, learn with and hope with. The people we share values and resources with. Our well-being will be decided by how we care for those disinherited from the fruits of the land, the landless, stateless, poor, queer, trans, disabled, the othered. We've inherited the trauma and logics of empire. We've also inherited the fire, beauty, wisdom, and ingenuity of freedom fighters. We've inherited our ancestors' tools. They are the colonial logics, and they are also the logics of freedom, love, oneness with the earth. It's clear gathered here that our ancestors, our comrades through time and space have made charms, charms we can work with to summon this freer world sooner. We see from the example what the charms are. We practice being in right relationship with reality. Yani see things as they are. Refuse to be swayed by fancy language that cloaks the truth. We talk together, we study together, we learn to clearly name what we see. Once we collectively practice naming these realities, we use what we have to get what we want. Yani, the tools, the answers, the how-to will be determined by our community's contexts. The state is not our center. We reject abuse in the name of community. We reject patriarchal violence in the name of community. We reject pedestals, golden leaders, cults of personality, cliques, and other violations of the self in the name of community. We honor our inner knowing and care for the self, even as we brew community. 
We reject policing ourselves and policing each other. We reject policing people's bodies in the name of community. We reject cultures of surveillance in the name of community. We need each other at a molecular level. Other, Our very bones and cells know that. We press these charms into our blood and bless each other. Community is all we have. This episode was written by Karetha Kiremi, researched by Tamara Kahai and Mumbi Kanyogo, recorded at Sounds Good Studio. Special thanks to Mumbi, Lisa, Chao, Jerry, Modoni Generali, Mwende, Ngatia, Abu, and Laura the Ululeta for lending their voices to this piece. <laughs>